Fala pessoal do Canal Tech, a gente está aqui no Geek City, o maior evento de cultura geek do sul do país, com convidados internacionais. Eu tenho a honra de ter aqui do meu lado James Obar, o rapaz que criou toda a história original do Corvo. A gente vai bater um papinho aqui em inglês. Então se você está aí no YouTube, já clica aí para você ter todas as legendas. Você pode ver aqui, ó, James Obar, super humorado. Vamos para o inglês então. Hi James, Hi. it's such a pleasure to be outside. Uh, with you and uh, thank you for coming by and talk with us. Sure, uh, so uh, you wrote your your book in the 1989. 1989. And uh, oh, it, it's yes. a 30 years, and you you are years, recognized yeah. even now. How it is it for you? Um, it, it's amazing. I I thought it would last about two years, and then I would fall into obscurity, um, but. Yeah, it's been in print for 30 years, um, 16 different languages, and now including Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, I, I read your book in Portuguese by Dark Sides here in Brazil, and in the introduction, we have the, the history about your fiancé. Right. Yeah, and how is it, um, how it is to write a history about a lost? Um, I mean, it, it was it was very difficult to do, um, and but but it was more as like art therapy, like get it get it out on paper, so I didn't have to hold all those feelings inside. But but I think it can be a two side situation because uh, with your famous side. You, you are always talking about that. How is it for you too? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's still difficult, you know. Um, but it's you know, it's been 40 years now, so I, I've you know, I I look at the book differently now. It's it's more of a celebration of love than a book about loss. So. No, it, it sounds really great. Congrats for for the, this feeling. So, and uh, you you are not just writing and uh, illustrating the crown. You have other jobs. Can you uh, tell us about your other jobs? Um, well, I was an auto mechanic for 12 years, and uh, and then I would go home and draw at night. Um, I worked in uh, like a, a home for the d disabled people, um, and uh, can you tell us uh, a little more about this? That's your job with uh, um, with these people. Um, yeah, it. it uh, well, things are are different in America, and so. Um, I just felt like a lot of these people were neglected. No one came to visit them, and and so they they became like a part of my family. You know, I would I would take them for walks or take them out in their wheelchairs, and I would feed them, and and um, a, a lot of them were older people as well, and with dementia so they they thought I was their son or their or their grandson and uh, so it, it was it was very rewarding in that way it was deeply sad but it was rewarding as well uh, I'd like to talk about the movie about your book right. yeah it, it's such a iconic move and uh, you participate of the, the production H how it was um, It was, you know, a anyone that's been on a movie set will tell you that it's total chaos and on top of being incredibly boring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why boring? Well, it's because they will, you will film a scene that takes five minutes and then it takes six hours to set up for the next scene. So you have six hours of nothing to do but wait, you know. Because they they have to move the cameras, they the new uh, the new set has to be lit, you know. So it's a it's a long time in between takes for like a two or three minute film scene, you know. So and um, 
But I, I mean, luckily the crow was like 29 days, you know. Whereas something like Batman versus Superman was a year and a half. So, um, so the 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 director was great. Um, he kept things moving. Um, so it, it was a good experience. Would you like to uh, make some jobs with the with films uh, another time? Yeah, I mean that's make, making at least one film is uh, that's on my that's on my list of things to do before I die. So. <laughs> Um, and uh, I know that you you are. I mean, I, I, I've had a lot of offers to, to make films, but they weren't they weren't films. They weren't anything that I had written. Um, and um, a, 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 a movie set is a constant series of compromises, you know. And uh, and I'm not good with that. It's like I I have a very specific idea that I want and um, and so I can be very demanding of crews you know you are uh, a, uh, a single man band you are a single man band yes yes uh, yeah it's like I I know what I want you know and then um, you know having to express that to every single person in the crew is tiring you know um, So, so unless it's some unless it's something I want to do that's personal to me, uh, I'm not going to invest that time, the time and energy into it. You know. Yeah, and I, I know that you made some um, comics for iPad, iPad, and uh, some digital art. And how is um, to digitalize your art to modernize your art? Yeah. Um, it, it was very frustrating. Uh, yeah, well, I I did the artwork and the writing, but someone else was doing the animation, and so I, I had to I had to explain to them over and over and over again what I wanted, you know, and uh, and they they I mean they they were just animators. They didn't understand like film theory about. Oh, okay. I want the focus to shift from front to back, and so it, it was very exhausting working with the animators. I spent more time working with the animators than I did doing the actual drawings. So, and can you tell us about your coming works? What you're doing right now? Uh, what we can expect about your job? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've I've always been working. Um, I've done a, a lot of like book covers and uh, record covers for bands and things like that. Um, but the, the last few years, I've been uh, I've been working on some new graphic novels because I, I really missed telling a story. So I, I'm working on two books right now that hopefully will be out um, early next year. Yeah. It's about your personal life too, or is well, something that's my personal life is always intertwined with the stories even if they're fictional so they're they're all things that I've experienced or witnessed so yeah. and something about crown that can uh, can we expect something about the, your famous book uh, well one, one of them is uh, is a crow related book um, but Every, everything I do is kind of related to those same things because that's what I like. I like, I like very romantic things that are violent and atmospheric and pro probably overly depressing. <laughs> um, so th those are the things that I'm drawn to. So anything I do is going to have those elements in it. Okay. And my last question for you, it's not even a question, it's if you could send a message for your Brazilian fans, what would, what would you like to say for them? Uh, please say to that camera for us, okay? Yeah, for that camp, please. That's the backup camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I know, I, I, I am very, very grateful to all the fans all over the world. Um, 
you've given me a very blessed life. Um, you've supported me for 30 years and uh, to allow me to do what I love for a living. And I'm very, very grateful. Okay, thank you for your interview. Thank you and congrats for your job. It's a really great job. E pessoal, a gente continua aqui no Geek City, contando mais com convidados internacionais. Temos outras entrevistas e não se esqueça, se inscreve no canal que tem muito mais aqui no Geek City, o maior evento de cultura geek do sul do país. Valeu, um abraço! And cut. <risos>